Disc Golf United recently released my Mako 3 stamp, and I went to the factory to pick some up, started throwing them, and they fly really, really well. I'm super excited about them. I'm usually a Comet thrower, but these are flying so well for me so far that I'm actually kind of wondering whether they're going to kick the Comets out of the bag. I haven't really had a chance to do a good thorough thrashing with them, like a full round in the woods, which is primarily where I would use them. So it's a little too early to tell, but it looks really good so far. So here's the first throw that I did. I got out of the car and I turned the camera on and basically just wanted to make sure I was going to stay in the frame and I'd be able to see the disc. So I got out and just basically walked up and tossed one at maybe 50% effort. And it looks great. I mean, it's basically a stand and deliver. There's a small X step in there, but it went 200 feet without really even trying. Just It just has really good glide and kept going forward. There's a left to right wind here. It's probably a constant 10 miles an hour. So it pushed this shot a little bit, but you'll see it affect some of the longer shots more later. I'm really happy with the glide that this shot had, and you'll notice that it didn't really have any fade. Here I am proudly showing off my stamp. I love the stamp. I think it turned out really well. Thanks a lot to Adrian and Disc Golf United for letting me stamp these things. Really excited. I've never thrown Mako 3s before, but now that it's got my stamp on it and I see how well they fly, I'd, I might have a new favorite mid-range. I don't know. A little too early to tell yet. Okay, so here's my first throw. It's just a low-powered, very small X-step. Walk up, just kind of toss it out there. Nothing real special. You can see the wind took it a little bit. I was basically getting a wind read, and you can really tell that the wind is pushing it from left to right. I noticed that the first throw got pushed by the wind a little bit too much, so I figured I'd put a little bit more hyzer on it to try and combat the wind. Definitely put some more snap into it. Still a small X-step, not a big run-up or anything. Just a normal mid-range shot. It got pushed a little bit, but that, that went pretty well. It was a good snap. Nothing outlandish. Went about 275 feet. Not too much fade. This next one I put even more hyzer on it, and it turned out really well. It flipped up to flat, got pushed just a little to the right. Basically had a real slow turn the whole way and not much fade at all. This next one I really put some more into it. Went about 340 feet. Got pretty high up. Caught by the wind. Turned a little bit. Faded out. This next one I really tried to go for max distance. This one I used U-Disc to measure and I got 353 feet. This is not a golf line for me. This is not a shot I would probably throw on the course. If I wanted that shot and that distance, I would probably throw a Leopard or something like that. I probably wouldn't be reaching for the Mako 3, but it's really nice to know that your mid-range can get up and go if you ask it to. So this next one, I tried to go for a little bit bigger power again, and I tried to keep it on a lower line. I know that once you get discs up in the air and you're recording them, then it's a little hard to see them silhouetted against the sky. So I'm trying to keep them a little bit lower for you guys, silhouetted against the trees so that you can see them better. I really put some juice on it, but I showed the underside of the flight plate to that left to right wind, and it got a hold of it, pushed it pretty far right. It's not crazy offline, but definitely not the line I was intending. I do remember thinking the release felt really weird on that, and you can see me shaking my hand afterwards, trying to shake the bad juju out of my fingers. So this next one, I'm going to put some more hyzer on it to try and fight the wind, and I love how the disc stands up, but the wind just takes it more than I want. Stands up and went past flat, showed the underside to that wind, and got carried away. Got good distance out of it. I don't know, like 330, 340, something like that. Not bad distance. It's just you can't show the underside of the flight plate to the wind, man. And here's the last one in the stack. I love throwing pink. Pink is awesome. You can see it anywhere it lands. 
So here I am. I'm just going to do a stand and deliver kind of shot because sometimes you got to do that with your mid range. Good snap, decent power, showed the flight plate to the wind, took it away. There she goes. I got kind of tired of the side winds, so in between this cut and the next one, I moved to a different location where I was hopefully a little more sheltered by the wind, but it ended up being a little bit of a tailwind instead of a side wind, which isn't the worst thing, especially because I'm much more likely to use these in a tailwind situation than a side wind situation. There, I'm showing off my stamps again. <laughs> I do, I do really like how they turned out. I think they look, I think they look kind of mean. So again, the first thing I'm going to do here is just kind of a standstill shot. Try to get the wind read. Not bad. What about 300 feet? A little too much turn. I thought that since I had a tailwind, I could put a little bit of Anheuser on it, but that actually had a little bit more than I wanted. Had a, a little bit of turn on it. Not a crazy amount of turn, but a little bit of turn on it. This next one, I tried to keep it low and silhouette it against the trees, but I turned it, had a bad release, just accidentally anhyzered it a little bit out of my hand and turned it over. These Mako 3s will turn over with more power, more than 300 feet of power, and they'll start doing that slow turn on you. So the next one I'm going to release with Heiser to try and change my luck that I had on the last two shots. And I think it stands up to flat, but I think I left the nose up. It flips up to flat because of the power, but I'm having nose up issues. The tailwind plus the nose up, it really just kind of sucked the glide out of it. I think that one only went about 280 feet and just got sucked down to the earth. So the next one, I'm trying to go even bigger power, and I get it up there against the sky, unfortunately. Got really carried away with it. And then you see there at the end, when it hits the ground, there's a big puddle, just a huge splash, which means I'm going spelunking to get my disc back because those puddles out there are huge. This next one, I'm sorry, again, I got it up against the sky, but I got a pretty good distance out. It's about 340. Pretty good rip. Gave it a good pull. Still has more turn than I want. Definitely more turn than I wanted. I think at these distances, I should probably be reaching for a Champ Mako 3 or a Star Mako 3, according to people's reports online. I don't know. I've never thrown those, but after throwing these and liking these, I'm thinking maybe I can use these for shorter, more neutral shots. So I'll keep these for the neutral shots and then complement them with a premium version in order to have the slightly overstable shot. So the last few were up against the sky, and I knew that. So these next few, I'm going to try and hyzer them over towards the woods to keep them silhouetted against the trees. I'll release with hyzer, and it's nice. It holds the hyzer the entire way. If you if you do your part, it will do its part and reward you. Held the hyzer the whole way, went about 290 feet. Just slow, controlled, smooth distance. It's gorgeous. Like I said, my comets are a little bit scared right now. This next one, if I remember, I had the nose a little too up. Yeah, nose up. And then sploosh right in the puddle. That's a deep puddle right there. Big shout out to my caddy who took her socks and shoes off and went and got that for me. I felt really bad that she did that, but she offered, so I let her. <laughs> and then the last one for this set I wanted to do like a low laser beam kind of throw. So I put good arm speed and snap into it and it went really straight, good glide, good penetration. It went about 300 feet. I was pretty happy with that. That's probably how I see this disc working for me. If I need something relatively low and straight and a little bit fast, then this would be a good solution. Comets aren't gonna do that. They need some height. Okay, so I picked up my discs and came back for another set, adjusted the exposure to Knock it down a little bit. My wife 4 monitor was showing me that it's a little bit too bright. I still have a little bit of a tailwind, and I'm going to try and play that a little bit better than I did during the last set. 
This first one with the pink, got a good rip on it. Went out to 350 feet, not much turn. I did get the nose down on this one, so I was happy with that. Didn't get much turn, not too much fade. That's a, I think that's what Mako 3s are supposed to do right there. That was fun. I like that. I want to keep doing that. I like that black and white stamp. It looks great. Disc Golf United did a really good job stamping these. So I'm going to put a little bit extra hyzer on this, see if I can keep it from flipping all the way over. And I did. Got up to flat, didn't really come over. Faded out at the end, and sploosh, big splash. And guess who's going back in the water again? <laughs> I'm really sorry. Huge shout out to my caddy again. Thank you. I'm trying not to do that anymore. So this one I'm going to try to hyzer it to flat and keep it from flipping over. And this one about 320 feet again. This had just a little bit of turn on it. It got very slightly past flat, but not bad at all. That's great. I, I really like that. I get addicted to seeing that shot shape. So for this shot, I tried to really power up on it and get something special out of it, hoping I could get some big distance. And I gave it a good angle and good power and all that kind of stuff, but nose was up, and so it didn't have any glide. I think it would have been over 350 if I had actually been able to keep the nose down. It just got sucked down. After going over there, I decided I needed to keep it back to the left and keep it silhouetted against the trees. So I'm going to put a little bit more hyzer on this one, try and keep it over in that 320 foot zone. We'll do a small hyzer release and flip it up to flat. Yep, just the way we hoped. I wouldn't call these zero fade. They're fading out for sure, but it's not much. One fade, one and a half, somewhere in that range. Like I said, I get really addicted to that flight shape and getting big distance out of slow discs. So for this next one, I really tried to put a good move on it and get her up and going, but I had great power on this shot, if I remember correctly. But it hurt my little fingy, so you can see me shaking my hand there. It's wet outside. It's really wet with the big puddles and everything. I forgot to bring a towel. That was a dumb move. Remember the camera and tripod? Forgot a towel. So for this next one, we're going to try a little intentional Anheuser and see how well it holds. Holds pretty well, held it pretty much all the way to the ground, started to fight out just a little bit there at the end. And then this last one, I'm going to put it on a distance line. I actually did manage to keep the nose down, but the wind just sucked it down. I thought I did everything right. The wind had other plans for me. I think it still went about 330 feet, but I put more than 330 feet of power on it. And that's in another big puddle. It's really sloppy out there. Testing discs isn't fun in these conditions. So throwing mid-ranges out in the open like that is fun, and it's fun to watch discs go far and straight, smoothly turn left, smoothly turn right, all that kind of stuff. But that's not really how I plan on using these Mako 3s. They're kind of a neutral mid-range Kind of like my Comets, except faster and like lower lines and maybe a little bit less neutral, maybe slightly more overstable. I don't know. I plan on using these in the woods a lot for those really touchy finesse shots through the woods, gently shaping a flight path around the trees to try to stay on the fairway. So in between these two sets, I moved to hole one. So this is a 260 foot hole. You can see the tee pad to the left of the frame. The basket is 260 feet up there on top of the hill, but because of the elevation, it plays longer. I think it probably plays like 300 feet if you could go straight at the basket. It's 200 feet to the bottom of the hill, so I'm usually throwing putters off the tee. I really like putters, and I throw them probably 90% of the time. Usually with a putter, I'm just looking to land into one of these two fairways. You have a nice, wide, relatively clear fairway going up to the basket on the left, and then a smaller, more constricted one on the right. Even though it was really wet outside, I chose not to use the tee pad because that way the camera could see the disc during the entire flight. 
All right, so since this is how I plan to use the Mako 3s, let's see how they fared in this situation. Again, for the first one, I'm just going to go for a standstill, just put maybe 50% power on it. Boop! Like, almost like a laser beam. Dead straight. A little bit of fade, not much. Yeah, that had some nose up on it, but it went 210 feet. No real turn, no real fade. Useful shot to have. Yeah, I'm not even going to comment on that one. So for this one, I'm still going for that left fairway over there. I'm going to try to put a little hyzer on it, see if it'll hold that smooth hyzer all the way over. Nice low line, held the hyzer the entire time. Not bad, 215 feet, barely had to put any arm into it. The next one, I'm going to try a higher line. Kind of flipped up on me. I'm surprised that at the shorter distance it flipped up, but not bad. Went about 220 feet, nestled down real nicely. So this next one, I think I tried a more aggressive, lower, firmer line, like a little laser beam. Oh, right. Kind of wind bounced it down. I think I like the line, but the wind had other plans for me. That was a really good shot for this hole. Just smooth, firm power, give it a snap, and gets up and goes. That was about 240 feet out there. Had a little bit more fade than I expected again. I think that's because of my nose up issues, but I like the result. Okay, so I tried for the left fairway. Now we're gonna take two attempts at the right fairway. Yeah, small Anheuser going right in the correct direction. A little tree branch helped me out there, kicked it kind of towards the basket. Felt great. I mean, not much power needed to go that distance. And again, that went 240 feet, but because of the uphill, I think it was probably more like 280 feet of power, somewhere in that region. And then this one, I'm going to try and get it to hold a hyzer the entire way and still go for that right fairway. And I think it did it really well. It went about 250 feet, held the hyzer the entire way, good glide, good penetration. I really like the disc. I think it's a winner. All right, guys, that's all I did today. Hopefully that answers some of your questions about how these are flying. Because of how this course is laid out, the rest of the holes are an absolute mud pit. So I couldn't get any good footage in there today. Hopefully soon I'll be able to get out and do some more with these. Give them a thorough thrashing. I love my comets, but these Mako 3s are looking pretty tempting. All right, thanks, guys.